with Design Like a Pro, and I have a special episode here. This one is going to walk you through my go-to method for planning my publications. I use a custom storyboard template for this, and I will share with you at the end of this lesson how to access that. But there's many, many ways that that storyboard template can be used, and I'm gonna show you my favorite way to use this. And I have been using this so much lately. And my trick is to use this on an iPad. So I have an iPad Pro that I use the storyboard on. I bring it in and then I use an app specific to taking notes that allows me to hand write directly into the PDF document. And then I can share that back out to myself super easily. Now you can definitely print this off and you can use InDesign to create the storyboard as well. But the reason that I like this is this is a very versatile on the go method. And so I can take my iPad with me, go to a client meeting, jump these notes down and then come back and know exactly what I'm going to be doing for the publication. So it's a real time saver. And that's why I've definitely moved my workflow from print and paper to digital planning in this particular case. So I'm going to show you everything that I use to make that happen. And then hopefully this is going to in make you a lot more efficient in your workflow when you're planning out any multi page document. So here we are, we're going to start on our on the iPad. And I'm going to show you how I bring the storyboard in to my iPad. So when you download the storyboard, you have access to a PDF and an InDesign file. So we're going to be focusing on the pre made PDF template. And this also allows you to open up InDesign, format the storyboard how you like, and then create the PDF as well. But you can definitely just out of the box use a PDF. So this is what I do. I scoured for an app and a really good note app. And so what I ended up using was this, this good notes for app. And it is hands down my most favorite note taking app because of the ability to write directly on PDFs. And it has been a huge lifesaver for that. And it syncs with all of the cloud apps to easily bring all of that in. And so out of all the ones that I tried, this one was my go-to good notes for. And I think there prob I think there is a cost to it, guys, but I, I do not believe it to be more than five bucks. I think it's a fairly inexpensive app if it is a paid app, but it's totally worth it for this feature alone. So let's go ahead and go right into good notes. I'm starting here with a blank screen of under a category and to show you just how easy it is to bring in the PDF. So we go up to the plus sign and you can create notebooks in GoodNotes, which is really cool. And you can pick what style of paper you like. Uh, so this is if you're just using it for the note app, but we want to import our storyboard. So we're going to go to import and you can see here all of the really cool things that it syncs with iCloud, iTunes, your photos, the camera, if you want to take a picture of something. Dropbox is what I use, uh, Box, Google, Google Drive, and OneDrive. So all of the primary cloud apps are included. And uh, you can also use the Adobe Creative Cloud libraries and you can save that to your iPad and then bring it in through your photos that way. But it is easier to use something like Dropbox. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Dropbox. And I have a quick grab folder that comes in super handy for things like this. And I have a landscape in vertical format. I'm gonna open up the vertical format. It's the one I use the most. It's great for vertical publications, booklets, things like that, magazines, definitely. And so you can see that now I've brought that in. And when I click on it, it gives me exactly what this blank storyboard is. And it's ready for me to start taking notes. And again, the beauty of this note app is that we can click the fountain pen and we can choose different colors. We can choose different lines. And then there's a highlighter function, which I'm going to show you how I actually use this to show me what content is pending and what content I currently have. And then there's a lasso tool up here that's gonna allow us to select and move things around. So I'm gonna show you just the basic features of the app, but this is definitely more about using the storyboard 
in your workflows for planning out content. So if I'm going to approach this as if I was meeting with a client and we're talking about a publication and I'm just taking down notes. So that's the process and we are gonna be planning out a magazine. So that is the topic, but just know this is so universal and something you can use for pretty much any publication. So the first thing that I would do is create the title here. So let's say this is just an urban magazine and you are about to see how nice my handwriting is on an iPad. <laughs> Um, and by the way, this is all about notes. So it is not about perfection here. I'm just doing this for me as a preliminary planning tool. And this is why I wanted to show you how to use this because I don't think, I don't think a lot of people realize that they can, they can do this planning in advance and it doesn't have to look awesome. It can totally just be notes at this stage. So we've got our urban magazine and we may put the client name here, uh, whatever notes you want to take just to uh, highlight this particular PDF. And then what we've got here, I give the front and the back cover on this section. So it really highlights for us. We can put some specific notes about the covers here. So I may put, you know, the articles that we want to focus on, and then I may bullet them here. And I may also want to highlight the image that we're going to use focus model say we want a person on the cover the back cover can be an ad or it can be a sponsor of some kind so again just notes for what i want to put where and i'm just using the apple pencil on the ipad pro to do this so now we move on the inside of our storyboard and again we're talking to the client about what we want and immediately i'm going to start placing ads because it's really important as you're moving through here if you're working in a magazine where there's ads involved that you want to be able to include that in your planning and then at the end of this i usually give my client a rundown of the ads that we need so we're gonna have an ad here. I'm gonna split this in half. This section is gonna be that typical edit, uh, credit, whatever you wanna call that there. That's where all the names are for the editors, the staff behind the publication, all of that fine print credit. And then we're gonna put a table of contents here. So this first section you're seeing, one way to do this is just to literally jot down what the content is directly on the page. And if I move forward, we're gonna start with our intro article here, and then we're gonna have another full page ad here. And then let's say I wanna split this into two half page ads, and then we have a single story here. And you can tell that I am not getting too specific on the titles yet. I just really wanna map out what is gonna go where and what the possibilities are. And then maybe I don't even have the content at this stage. If I'm just sitting down with a client, I may not even have that. So this is just gonna get us started. But if you wanna do more layout with your storyboard, let's take the next two pages and instead of writing text for what it is, let's put a feature article at the top of this. And then we can actually sketch, sort of wireframe out what we may wanna do as far as text. Say we want two columns of text, but we want one column across here. So you don't have to just use it in text. You can sketch out something to be able to get an idea for the layout that you want. And so this could be the feature article continued. So we're gonna do feature article across four pages. And then if you screw up there and you wanna make that disappear, the notes app is fantastic for easily deleting things. And say you decide, okay, I wanna move the feature article. I wanna move it further into the magazine. All I have to do is using that lasso tool, I can shift this now down to maybe these pages here. Okay, and then if it doesn't fit just so, you can come in a little closer and then you can grab things individually if you want to. Get that uh, to fit back on the page. So there, it's so fast and it's so customizable as you're working through here. And that's what makes this template so amazing for just plotting things out. And one thing to keep in mind is that the back cover is here, but you do want to just mark where your back cover is 
and where you're going to end. This is super helpful because as I've said before in booklets, you've got to have at least four page spreads for your booklet. So if your client or boss says we need to add a page, you know that that actually means that you need to add four pages to your booklet. So now we have four additional pages. It's not a matter of just adding a single page. And that is to keep in tune with the spreads. So the last thing I'm going to show you is how do I highlight? I use the highlighter tool to quickly give myself notes on what is pending. So over here, I'm going to quickly just draw out a legend of two colors. And then I'm going to come in here and say that this is pending. And this is um, have. OK, so this is content. This is how I know what content I'm still waiting on and one what I actually have. So we can utilize that by just oops, we can highlight what we may actually have in our document. And then we can use the pink color to mark just roughly. And again, this is so meant to be fast, guys. Nothing high fidelity here. And we need all of the text content for our feature article. And we only have two of the three photos. So this helps me know what I have and what I don't have. And this also allows me to send this to the client and let them know what I, what you have and what you don't have. So this is up to you, whether you share this with the client or not, you can totally just use this as your own tool for mapping out publications. But the final step is, okay, I've done this on the iPad, now what? I can definitely take this to my desk and look at it on the iPad. But if you want to send this back to yourself, all you have to do is come over here and you click export and you can export a single page or you can export all of them. And you have a choice for what your format is, but you definitely want to probably keep that in the PDF format and then you can export it. And the beautiful thing is you can export it right back to Dropbox or whatever cloud app you use. So I might stick this back in the quick grab, click upload, and then it shoots it over to Dropbox for me. And now it's in Dropbox. So now I can say I can go to my desktop computer, my laptop, whatever I'm going to use to design, pull that down, print it, keep it up on the screen, whatever I want to do with it, it's ready to roll. So this shows you guys a quick way and a very effective way to utilize that storyboard tool. So I have the link for you below to pick that up. And once you purchase it, you will have access to the PDF and the InDesign document to get rolling on this. If you have any questions about how to utilize this or any of the apps that I mentioned, by the way, they are just apps that I use. It is, it's not something that I am paid in any way to talk about, but it is just my workflow that I've made work for publication design. So if you have any questions about this process, please leave them in the comments below and I will answer them for you. I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.